So what would be the general name for this? Remember that so far we've seen aldotrioses and aldotetroses. What would be kind of a name for this compound? Ketos. So ketotetros. Yeah, ketotetros. So I just wanted to mention that not all sugars have aldehydes. Some have ketones. There's aldehyde-based sugars and ketone-based sugars. Aldehyde-based sugars and ketone-based sugars. And why is the ketone in the middle? Though? Well, otherwise it wouldn't be a ketone, would it? If it was terminal, it would be an aldehyde. So you, you could put the carbonyl at the top, but that would just be a different sugar. That would be a aldose. That would be something with an aldehyde group. If the carbonyl is in the middle, it's got to be a ketose. All right, so the sugars can be based on either aldehydes or ketones. But the ketone has to be at the one next to the top, right? It can't just be perfectly in the middle? Uh, I don't know if there's any rule for that. Let's see, all the examples that they have here, yeah, the, the ketone is, uh, is on the number two carbon. So maybe in the naturally occurring sugars, the ketone usually is on the number two carbon. Carbon is either an al is either an alcohol or a carbonyl carbon. That's kind of a defining characteristic of all these sugars. Incidentally, all the sugars we've been talking about so far have been monosaccharides because we've just been talking about one sugar unit. All right, now, um, so what would be the general name for this? We've seen aldotetroses and ketotetroses. What general category would this be? Aldohexose. Yeah, it's an aldohexose. Good. Now, it looks like you don't need to memorize the sugars, but if you're going to memorize one, it should be this, maybe besides this rabbi, because this is glucose. D or L? D. And which way does D glucose rotate light? We do not D. know. Yeah, we can't tell. The D doesn't tell you which way it rotates light. You'd have to look up whether it's plus or minus. You can see that there's a whole bunch of diastereomers here because there's all types of different arrangements we can have at these four stereocenters. There's lots of different arrangements we can have here. As long as we keep the bottom stereocenter pointing to the right, we'll still have the D form. Incidentally, in nature, our sugars are generally D or L. D. Yeah, you should memorize that in nature, almost all sugars are D. It's kind of uh, mysterious why nature just chose one type of sugar, but almost all sugars are D. And then how would I write down L glucose? You would put all the stereos on it. That's right. So we were just talking about the trap. Just switching this bottom stereo center would not give you L glucose. Apparently, it would give you IDOS or something like that. Um, you have to change it, all the stereo centers to get the L form of a sugar. Uh, that is, so if I did shift this bottom stereo center, that would give you an L sugar. It just wouldn't be L glucose. Make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. And at every stereo center, like every one of the horizontal lines, there's going to be an H on one side and an OH on one side. That's right. That's right. That's right. For these simple sugars, that's correct. 
every single carbon is either a carbonyl carbon or an alcohol carbon, but none of them have more than one alcohol in a single carbon. Now, this here we have aldehydes and ketones. So we should think back to our aldehyde and ketone chemistry. And we also have a bunch of alcohols. Well, do you remember what happens when you react alcohols with aldehydes and ketones? They come in ester. Take your time. What type of reaction do we usually get between alcohols and aldehydes and ketones? Just in general terms. Carboxyl. I was going to step back and re remember wait, wait, that for what? a second. Wait, alcohol plus a ketone? Or an aldehyde? Yeah, what type of reaction would you get? Yeah, you get an ester, the oxygen attacks. You're thinking, about, you're thinking in terms of carboxylic acid oh, derivatives. Oh. Now we're shifting gears to aldehydes and ketones. We just get an alcohol. No, you get an. We looked at it yesterday, why can't we? Um, the O will attack, becomes you get the ether. ether. That, that it, an alcohol. It is a type of ether, that's right. So the key thing here is um, we're not working with carboxylic acids and acid derivatives anymore. We're working with aldehydes and ketones. Remember, now we have to start thinking in terms again of those three categories of nucleophilic attack on aldehydes and ketones. Oh, so, and the acetal. That's right. So remember that when alcohols attack aldehydes and ketones, you get acetals or ketals or hemiacetals or hemiketals. By the way, now you can kind of see what the whole theme of the end of the course is. I think yesterday we were talking about how peptide chemistry is really just an application of carboxylic acid derivative chemistry, right? We were seeing how we just kept doing nucleophilic attack and carboxylic acid derivatives, which were addition elimination reactions. Well, sugar chemistry is just an application of aldehyde and ketone chemistry. The key thing your instructor wants you to do is apply the aldehyde and ketone uh, mechanisms that you learned earlier to sugars. If you look at peptides, you can see that peptides have carboxylic acids and acid derivatives because they've got carboxy groups and they've got amide groups. But if you look at sugars, remember that these have aldehydes and ketones. So the thing that was messing us up before is that we were thinking in terms of carboxylic acid derivatives. We have to shift gears and go back to the aldehydes and ketones. So we are going to expect to get acetals and ketals and hemiacetals and hemiketals here. Oftentimes, we're going to use this bottom carbon here. Notice that theoretically, a lot of these different carbons could attack. Theoretically, a lot of these different carbons could attack. That's going to want to do the more stable one. But we want to form, what, what size rings do we like to form? Six or five. Six or five membered rings, that's right. Six and five membered rings are generally what we want to form. So. Is this six member? This has nothing to do with anything. Just a six-membered ring with a plus charge is less favorable than a five-membered ring with a plus charge? Uh, a six-membered ring didn't have a plus charge. Not that I know of. So a six-membered ring neutral is not as favored as a five-membered ring with a plus charge? Uh, anything with a charge is generally going to be worse than something that's yeah. neutral. Okay. But anything that has a charge, usually can get, usually you can get rid of the charge. Well. Yeah, we did that in our lab, and they went it wrong, and they said that the five-membered ring with the charge is more preferable because it doesn't delocalize the charge more easily. Oh, it must be that the five-membered ring had extra resonance forms that the six-membered ring didn't, perhaps. Mm. So there's no general rule for that. There must have been some special feature of those, those rings yeah. to help it to, de uh, to do that charge. Okay, so let's say that we have glucose in an acidic environment. What would happen first here? The carbonyl would propanate. All right, and then we can get one of the alcohol groups to attack. That'll look like this. Put in some numbers here. I'll call this the number one carbon, two, three, four, five, and six. We know we like putting in asterisks, so I'll put in some asterisks here. Now, how many atoms are there going to be? And you know, I think I'm going to name this the number seven oxygen, because it's going to be helpful to keep track of that oxygen. So I just put in the number seven as a label. Now, how many atoms will there be in our ring? Three. 
How many atoms total will there be in the ring? Yeah, let's count with our fingers. Starting with the oxygen, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're back to the oxygen. So it'll be a six-membered ring. But they're not all going to be carbons. One of the atoms in the ring will be an oxygen. So after I draw the hexagon, I should erase one of these and put in an oxygen. And you might have already seen that the convention is to put the oxygen here. These are what are called Haworth projections. I don't know if your instructor used that term. The convention when we're drawing the cyclic form of the sugar is to put the oxygen here. So we counted how many atoms, and then we replaced one of them with an oxygen. All right, and the convention is to put the carbonyl carbon over here. So here's the former number one. And then what number should this get? Two. Two, three, four. Five. Who's attached to the number five? Six and then an alcohol. 